Hi, I'm Brian. You may recognize me from all those red-headed step jokes that you've heard. And I'm going to teach you how to replace a water pump impeller on your OMC King Cobra. Brian's Mobile One. So this came today. I think it fell off the conveyor because I think it's been a lot longer than what it normally takes to get here. I'm happy it's here, but this makes me a little bit nervous. I'll open it and see if these rare parts that I had to order from Florida because they're not available locally are still in good shape. So this is one of the parts I was worried about. So that's okay. The other part that I'm concerned about is this one for obvious reasons it's not very thick and uh, it looks pretty good too not bad this doesn't require a whole lot of tools I've pretty much just got a 3 8 drive socket a screwdriver a pair of snips and a kit the kit's the important part you're gonna want to have this metal housing the o-ring and I've already got that sealed in place you want to do that ahead of time I've got the impeller, that's the main event. And then I've also got a wear plate, a wear plate gasket. Uh, two more tools. I like to have a razor blade to get the old gasket off. And then either some sandpaper or some other means to like a steel wall to get the rest of the gasket off. To get to it is a lot easier than you're thinking. They've got three bolts here, all three eighths. Just zip those off. If you haven't had the cover off in a while, the screwdriver is nice to have to pry the cover. The cover is actually made out of fiberglass or plastic. And then that gives you access to the uh, water pump impeller housing. You can see that there's a little tube here. This tube helps carry water that's used as a lubricant. It's still connected at the bottom, but the top is rotten. That's probably the main thing that's wrong with this. Let's see if there's more. We'll get a little deeper into this. So again, 3 8 inch, you just unzip these three bolts. They're all three the same size, just like on the cover, which is really brilliant design in my opinion. Uh, when you go to take this off, you'll find that the impeller is located inside the housing. We'll take a little closer look. We've got an O-ring that's separating. That's why I like to glue mine in ahead of time. This one's actually not too bad seen worse. As for the impeller, when you get into these, sometimes they look fine, but when you look at the leading edge, what edge would be here, you'll find that they're all torn up. If they're torn up, then they don't get a good seal. As we pull this out, that's what the edges look like when they go bad. You can see the leading edge of this is just all ripped to pieces. Don't be distracted by the handsome red beard, just look at the impeller. Uh, but that's going to cause it to not seal well and you're not going to get good flow. Uh, looking closer at it, you can see melted plastic on this side. That means that that friction that was being created by that being run dry, basically you have to put muffs on this with your garden hose to make sure some water's there, or have it in a lake or don't bother starting it, because if that rubber runs dry on metal, it gets hot. You can see where it melted that pretty bad. So these are all toast. All right, diving deeper into this, uh, we've got three more bolts. Again, 3 8 inch. I can't think of a lot of ways to make this a better design other than using the metric system. Pretty sweet setup as far as uh, from the mechanics perspective. You can see we've got the gasket on the back there. The gasket, you can see that there's been a little bit of corrosion that's caused it to get a little weaker than it's been. And an important note, pay attention to which side this is on. There's a bypass that needs to have flow. You can see that on this side there's also a thing there. Don't block that. Water needs to get there. So I like to use Permatex Right stuff on just about everything. I've had fantastic results with it, so I just keep using it. So I'm going to just kind of put place this up here and look about where I want to put it. This does two things. It helps prevent uh, passage of water where it shouldn't go. It also helps pre prevent corrosion, almost like a paint cut it coating. Gabi, 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 that's all folks. A little stuttery today. You can't put this on wrong because one of the thing, one of the uh, bolts is offset. It's not at the very bottom. It looks like some kind of superhero mask, doesn't it? Yes, it does. If you tighten the bolts just partially, it's a lot easier to get your other bolts in or you can center them. If this is a little bit crooked, it can make it difficult to start your other bolts. 
Now, when we took this other one off, it's a good idea to check and see which way it's uh, smushed or rotating. You can tell that this one is worn on this side, and it goes on this way. So, when we put the housing on, we want to rotate it the same direction that the memory is on it. In this case, that's counterclockwise. If you look closely, you can see there's an arrow on the end of that to indicate where the end of the point goes. This is a triangular shaped thing, so you want it pointing this way. I just realized I forgot grease. That's the other thing you need. So I've got my arrow lined up with this. Another indication that you need a new one, and see how far this can wiggle? When these get worn out or hot or cooked or messed up, see how much play that has? If you get too much play, it's just going to skip. It's not even going to rotate properly. So before I put everything together, I just kind of do a practice run and just kind of imagine, all right, so I'm going to put this on about like this. In fact, one of the things you can do is line it up like this first and then look at where you're clocked. So we're clocked down to the left like that. So you could even do it by hand this way. So it's going to go that way. So what I do is I take a little bit of marine grade grease. It's fun to say marine grade grease and ground bees. I don't know why I get satisfaction out of that, but just take a little grease and just run that on the impeller all the way around. Now I'm favoring uh, the clock, so clockwise side of each of these because that's what's going to be making contact. And like I say, there's two ways to do it. Either you can twist this into here or you can twist it onto there. And if you go the wrong direction and you fire the boat up, guess what? It's going to crack and go the other way. 99 times out of 100. We're going to take this. We're just going to rotate that around this way. Just like that. And then I'm going to pull it right back off. It's in there the way it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to run some gasket maker around the outside of this. Make sure you get all the high spots and low spots. Alright. So I just put it back in place. Put some bolts to it. I like to be able to just really feel what's going on so it's not too loose, not too tight. Go the opposite side here. When you're working with triangles, there's no wrong answer in terms of what bolts next. Really feel that rubber getting smushed in there tight. So I'm just doing a preliminary flatten down and then we'll torque it afterward. Remember, you're tightening down a plastic housing. Yeah, it's got some uh, metal grommets to it. But don't crush it. If you want to use some blue thread locker or something on the bolts, uh, that's a good way to keep them from getting seized in there too. You can use anti-seize, but you run the risk of having things back out sometimes. Ideally, we'd like to clean this all up, but this thing's leaving town on a trip here shortly, so we're getting her done. As I had mentioned earlier, this has failed, so we're going to do a little cleanup on it. So I'm going to get down to where the dry rot isn't and clip it off, probably about down here. Okay, now normally you'd get a new tube, but because these are hard to get parts for and time's limited, I'm going to be using a ferrule that I made. I use that Eastwood flaring tool. It's just, it blows my mind how cool that thing is, how well it works compared to other products. Let's sink that about halfway. I put my new hose on. Alright, just gonna get this to the resting position where it's supposed to be. Cut it about there. Like I say this it just delivers water basically. The nice thing about doing the OMC is you don't have to drop the lower drive. But the bad thing about the situation is to replace this, have to wait on parts and lower the bottom drive. So we're going to try this out and see how it holds. You know what I think it's going to do, or else I wouldn't be doing this. That's solid. That's going to work. Cool. So I'm going to secure that with some zip ties. Technically, you can just leave it the way it is. There's nothing zip tie in it to begin with. This is just added precaution. 
cheap insurance, that's what I call it. We'll put the cover back on and we're pretty much done. Start these the first few threads. You know, if you got normal nuts and bolts, you don't have to be quite so careful, but when you're screwing into an outboard motor or something, make sure that you do a few threads by hand first, or just do it all by hand. We'll hand torque it the rest of the way. These are uh, stainless steel bolts that are going into what I think is either aluminum or magnesium. Either way, you got a hard metal that's easy to replace going into a soft metal that's very hard to replace. There you go. Be sure to click like, subscribe if you want to see more videos on this. I do a lot of cars, motorcycles, boats. It's a planes, trains, and automobiles kind of thing. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, here's some bonus footage at the end. Great place to be a buzzard. Look at that. This is where there's a volcanic slide and it's almost all the way eroded out. That's the volcano right here. You can see where it slid down. You see the volcanic stuff all the way on the other side, and all that's left now is that rapid. It's the biggest rapid at 40 foot drop in this section, but just amazing. That black rock is just something else. Really heavy, really dense. Takes a while to wear down.